Um, and we're back. We're here. We are transitioning to online, uh, which means that I will be doing this for the foreseeable future. So uh, let's see where it takes us. Um, today we're going to be getting back into the, the groove of things, and I think that the reading um, that we'll be looking at, which is Chuck Tryon's Restricting and Resistant Mobilities, Negotiating Digital Delivery from his book On Demand Culture. Um, and so this is where we start transitioning into our second unit. We've already kind of talked about Netflix for quite a bit for the first um, good chunk of the semester, and now we're going to start moving into the uh, other platforms um, and, and see what happens with that. Today operates, I think, as a really great refresher, so after spring break. Um, and so we'll, we'll kind of cover uh, some familiar territory, which you know only makes sense, um, but also start to transition into other kind of concerns. So um, just to kind of get us started, I'll go ahead and I'll put up in usual faction, um, uh, uh, if, if, if you can't tell, you know, this is nerve wracking for me too. Um, but the, the, the kind of main point, uh, just so that you can kind of ground us and orient us for um, the rest of uh, the class. I mean, it, it, yeah, it's a class. Right? Um, so one, let's go. Like, as we've seen time and time again, um, as opposed to our, our and kind of the general public's interest in production, um, this is really, again, sort of where, where uh, everything is kind of happening is, is in the domain of distribution, right? So the importance of distribution is one. Two. Um, I think what Tryon is sort of really getting at in looking at um, the history of streaming, um, especially in relationship to what these providers are kind of publicly putting out there as opposed to what they're actually doing, is the relationship between perception and actuality. And so especially early on, you'll notice in the language that there are quite a few times when he talks about um, or he, he'll explicitly say what is perceived or what, what is perception. And again, as a sort of general reading tool, just be on the lookout for any sort of keywords that keep popping up because, you know, generally it'll be conscious. Um, sometimes it may be unconscious, but you'll get a sense as to what the writer is interested in, what is really grabbing the writer's attention, and or um, what kind of the, the big, bigger concerns are, right, what, what really sort of stands out. Um, and just to kind of get to um, a quick uh, passage from the reading that I think really kind of encapsulates that second sort of concern of perception and actuality, if we go to page 50, so bear with me, I mean that'll be the theme for a while is you kind of have to bear with me. Um, so let's see. So this is uh, the section resistant mobilities, piracy, and peer-to-peer -peer sharing, and we'll get back to this, of course. But in that first full paragraph, uh, about halfway through, um, he starts bringing up Vincent Mosco, and it says, Vincent Mosco refers to as the internet myths of freedom and mobility to promote de delivery methods that in fact give them greater control over how consumers use the movies they watch, right? So, you know, just this language of I mean, again, like the importance of rhetoric, right? So the language of myths and freedom. Um, and this is not only what's being promised, right? But even if we look at our own language about the way that we talk about streaming, right? Especially in a time like this, and, and you know, because all of us are kind of at home. Um, and so, so we have to keep ourselves sort of um, occupied and entertained. Um, so, so what is being promised and what is being perceived, right? And, and it's not that this isn't, I mean, that's the thing, right? It's not a total myth. Um, it's not that there isn't freedom, right? But in actuality, right, what's actually, actually going on, right, is that there's greater control. And that's kind of this interesting and incredible conundrum, 
right? And, and it seems like, how, how does this work? How can it be simultaneously both freeing, right, but also controlling? And again, this is the sort of precision that you've heard me go on and on about. I'm not going to touch my face. We go on and on about um, in terms of uh, uh, they can be both of these things at the same time, and we have to be very vigilant and diligent about how exactly it's both this and that at the same time. And what Tryon is kind of put, putting here, and Moscow is putting here, right, is that it's actually more about this and less about this, and yet even though the ratios are kind of off, we're so interested in this rather than this, right? We kind of see what we want to, right? There's another passage um, on 55, and this is the section, um, resistant mobilities, cutting the cord on pay television, and this is one of the first times that we've really talked about cord cutting, um, and so that'll be the transition. I think uh, Hulu especially gets us to this idea, and again, this sort of relationship between streaming and television, right? Network television, cable television. Um, but, you know, not necessarily liberation as such, right? And we've talked about that quite a bit, like what is liberation, right? But the idea of liberation, right? Um, uh, so the metaphor of cord cutting builds upon the idea of liberation. Users are freed from their dependence, right? So it's independence, right? Um, on cable television and provided new forms of mobility. Um, and this is one of the things that Tryon is kind of really interested in, right, is mobility and the mobility that's afforded by something like the new platforms. But again, um, how much of mobility is actually afforded and how much mobility is the mobility that's allowed. And once it's allowed, right, uh, and especially along particular tracks, um, I touched my face. I'm probably going to keep doing that. Um, and, you know, when that mobility is allowed and it's being controlled, how free is that, is that mobility? How mobile is mobility really, you know, um, and how much of it is actually liberatory, right? Okay, so finally, I mean, already we're kind of getting into it. Um, the third point... I mean, needless to say, this is very weird that, you know, um, that you all aren't here, but I'm trying my best. Third would be um, history, right? Um, and what he points out on 42 as the ongoing effort to negotiate. I have no idea if you can even see this in the video, meaning what's on the board. Uh, I guess I'll see once I look at the recording. But um, on 42, sorry, yeah, in the last partial paragraph of the page on 42, um, he notes, these changes reflect an ongoing effort to negotiate the value of media content for both the media industries and the consumers. So he's talking about like the licensing agreements and how Hulu and the networks were kind of, you know, um, sort of embroiled in these, in, these, in these kind of intense negotiations. But if you think about like this relationship of negotiation, that's going on in this case between like three parties basically, in this instance specifically, say so Hulu, uh, you have NBC Universal, and then you have the consumers, and this is all happening, you know, in um, the late aughts, right when streaming is sort of really exploding. Um, this is a this is a, whole, a historical and cultural moment, right, where these different parties, and specifically you have consumers on one end and producers on the other, producers and distributors, right? Um, really just like the industry, right? The media industry. You're seeing how they're trying to cope with this, right? And trying to um, sort of 
find their own bearings and their own terms as to how they're going to move forward, right? So it's a moment of change, and we're seeing these parties trying to deal with change. And so this is an instance, right, of understanding history, right, contemporaneously, because this isn't that long ago, and more importantly, this is a moment that we're still in, as, as is evident, you know, evidenced in this book, in this class, that, um, uh, you know, this isn't, this isn't ancient history. You know, they keep, they keep talking about, for example, past media history, past TV history, past home media history, and even that might seem like a sort of moment that's like long and gone, but that's just not the case. So the reason that I'm bringing this up is the value of thinking of a historical moment, you know, while it's still kind of really fresh in the memory, or in this case, I would even suggest that we're actually in that moment, right? And trying to figure out, um, you know, like, like what's happening as it's going on. But also just to kind of, again, emphasize this point that it, it's, not, it's not, history is not dead, certainly. Um, uh, it's not stable, it's not static, it's not finished. Things are constantly sort of happening, right? Which always leaves open the kind of possibility of, of change in a new direction. So, um, I mean, I think, I think you kind of get where I'm going with that, right? That makes sense, right? Um, I guess instead of asking you all, does that make sense? I'm going to ask you all, does that make sense? Through the camera, but, but still ask you. Um, okay, anyways, that's kind of where we're going. Um, let's go ahead and move on to uh, uh, getting into the actual uh, text.